be gorgeous. Welcome to Bravo and Please, where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. All right. We did it. We are live. I'm your girl, Jenny Blaze. We're live on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook with replays available and the audio podcast available on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. We are here to bring you all the latest in Bravo pop culture and weed news. However, let me just give a disclaimer that this is for entertainment purposes only. So today we have a special guest joining us. We have Ryan Bailey of So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. And we're going to talk about Scandaval, but also I wanted to kick off with a little bit of BravoCon chit chat because that's where Ryan and I last saw each other. And I don't want to keep him waiting too long. I do have visuals, like I said, um, for those of you on Instagram, come join us on YouTube for the interactive chat. You can, I share my screen. It's like a whole upgrade situation, but we have Ryan Bailey here today. I want to remind you to subscribe and turn on notifications, subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps this show to continue to grow. Also, don't forget our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and everywhere else. And as you know, BravoAndBlaze.com has all sorts of fun Bravo-inspired merch and products from all your favorite shows. If you know where this one's from, Grandfather MFR, drop it in the comments. Um, Also, if you have been following along, you may know that I'm a former IT and business management consultant for over 15 years with one of the best global consulting firms in the world. I've helped eight-figure businesses grow to nine-figure businesses and essentially help people make more money with their businesses. So if you're looking for a digital strategy strategy and business solution consulting professional, please make sure you check out my other podcast, Cannabis Mom Boss. In addition, in addition to helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses, the mission of Cannabis Mom Boss is to empower others to safely and confidently come out of the green closet and modernize the perception of today's cannabis consumers. Normally, before Scandaval, Cannabis Mom Boss is live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern here on the same YouTube channel, which is also available for replay if you miss the live stream. And in addition, if you are a podcast listener, you're in luck because Cannabis Mom Boss is also available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. And we will resume all things Cannabis Mom Boss after Scandaval. If that ever happens, I don't want to take any more time away from our special guest. He is a pop culture guru and Bravo aficionado. I would like to give a warm welcome to Ryan Bailey. Oh my God! What's up, Blazers? Uh, <laughs> l- listen, I was li- I had to look at my old headshot for this entire time, and I was like, that headshot of me is like pre Sandoval, and now this is what San- Sandoval has done to me. I've completely. Well, I'm going on about three hours of sleep right now. And I mean, by my own doing, by working on the podcast and stuff. Like all of this, by the way, Jenny, uh, sorry to just over talk here, but th- uh, this is so, so funny because we do this to ourselves. Like, I mean, like yeah. nobody's asking me to do that. You know, like this is just the the own, my own, uh, tor- I'm torturing myself at this yes. point. Like, yeah. I, I just, I don't care at the, like, Sandoval, Raquel, I hope you're Rachel, Raquel, whatever, we're Rocky, whatever, we're, like, just go be happy. Rocky. I'm so oh glad God. the reunion is over. For these cast members, most of the hard lifting is done. It's us, the Bravo audience, that now has to be here for two more months of <laughs> waiting for this reunion. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. I'm just dying. <laughs> I really wish they just would adopt a new production style where they are in. I didn't know what Big Brother was until Scandaval. I didn't know it's like a live feed into a home where all these people share. And like, imagine if Scandaval was happening in a Big Brother house and like we had a live think WWE Monday Night Raw type of yeah. reunion. 
I I used to say uh, like this was like five years ago. I have the like the sir out uh, like the sir. This is uh, Ether and Opal. Ether and Opal sells these, but yes. I used to say, you know what? I would pay like a hundred dollars a month to just get a live CCTV outside of the Sir Alley. I used to right? be like, wouldn't that just be great? But yeah, that's I the know. problem I think with social media and podcasts and yes. everything that we do now is that we're so much more immediate than Bravo can ever be, and yeah. so. Right now, you've got the Bravo show, and then you have all of us. You have TMZ, you have Backgrid, you have all of these yes. things clamoring for every juicy piece of information. I so know. by the time we get to the actual show, my my thought about all of this is always like, are we still uh, are we still going to be as excited? Are we? Is there going to be any surprises left? And Bravo, I mean, I think they're trying their best, but it like they took away the cast phone yesterday during the reunion. But that doesn't really do anything from this point on, you know? Yeah. Uh, Am I supposed to be blazing for this? Am I supposed to be? Am you I, can if you want. You don't have to. I, I, no, I'm horrible. I would. I would just like zone out and just stare at you for like an hour and then try to eat my way and like fudge. You know, like there's, uh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> so yeah, it's well, it's you're wild. welcome to if you want to. Yeah. No, so I just didn't is, know that was like a requirement. No, definitely not a requirement ever of anybody. Um, before, okay, so there's so much we got to talk about with Scandal because you said. They got their phones taken away, but something happened directly to me during the reunion, and it's a, a mystery. Anyways, we'll do wait, talk did about like it. God? Did God come to you? What did, did some? Oh, Tom Sandoval liked one of your things liked, from a long time ago. Yeah, right? in which I will get to that. But anyways, okay. Yeah. So I want to talk about BravoCon real quick because we got to meet in person, and that's where I met. I was with Everybody, Tom, yeah. Ariana, Raquel was lurking. We were there together. I actually have footage of you walking into BravoCon yeah. for the first time. If anyone's interested, there's links in the show notes. <laughs> but it was so wild. And at one point in the video that I caught, you're like, this is like Cloverfield. And I don't even know what Cloverfield is. Oh, I and think I it was, was just like, like, I was like, it was like, uh, that's a monster movie that sets place in New York where uh, an alien or like a monster hits and everybody's like running yes. and it's like just big crowds of people. Yes. And I felt that kind of same nervousness walking yes. in because I, I was at that direct TV shoot and I got there late, like after the Beverly Hills panel. So I saw you, I didn't know how to get in. I and was then smoking I got, outside because I was yeah, stressed out. I got there, I got in and I was like, oh, this is way too much. And I had all my yeah. luggage with me from yes. the shoot. And so I didn't know. I was just really, and then, then, you know, a couple people knew who I was and that was scary. And then I started <laughs> sweating profusely and the whole thing was just so bizarre. I mean, but in the best way possible. And I can't wait well, for I fanned you. round two. Yeah. You know, you did well, everybody, <laughs> poor people that were like hugging me. They were like, Oh my God, you're like, just soaked. you're so, um, but it, I hope it takes place in Las Vegas because it's yes. closer to me and <laughs> it will still be, it will be even a bigger mess. But I mean, the charm of New York was amazing, but mm -hmm. Vegas seems like it's so fit for Bravo and, and more yes. fans will be able to be there without paying a ticket for the actual Bravo con part of it, yes. which would be awesome. And I think, I mean, the only scary thing is like, I would lose, a, I would spend a lot more money. You would yeah. think it would be cheaper, but then you'd be like, hey, I'm feeling lucky. I should bet a hundred dollars on black right now. And then you would just lose so much more money. Well, also, like, there's no concept of time in Vegas, whereas, like, in New York, we were kind of forced to, with Javits, you know, like, it's all glass, so you know if it's light out or dark out. But in Vegas, everything is, like, lit up, so it feels like you can do something all the time. And that was almost an issue with BravoCon for me. Like, I overexerted myself, and I tried to do everything and go to everything. And I know oh. people who, like, I was like, oh, my God, did you even sleep last night? I don't know what Coachella or, or Burning Man is like, but I imagine like BravoCon is like my Coachella. Oh, see, I, I've been to 14 Coachellas and it was very, oh, and by, wow. the way I was at the last Coachella with Sandoval, oh Ariana, Rocky, Rachel, Rachel, my friend Megan, Ariana, all the, Sheena, uh, Jesse Montana, Brad, Logan, all of those guys. And like, that's why I was saying that rumor with this, the, she made, she made out with Schwartz. I was like, I never saw anything like that. I mean, like I, in fact, I remember we were dancing in a tent and it was like, I remember Sandoval and Ariana like kissing and hugging. And I was just like, oh, and cause you know, this oh. thing, it was a different, I would, I mean, that's why this thing like, 
I was shocked, shocked. I mean, I know that we're going on 21 days of this, but <laughs> at first, when I had first heard this, I was just like, nah, that's another rumor. That's not true yeah. at all. Like, I, I was I, in denial no, too. Oh, I, I was leaving nasty comments on DJ James Kennedy's post where he's like, <laughs> look, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. Guys night, guys night. <laughs> um, but so I didn't believe it at all. And so that's why it really, and, and I, I keep apologizing on my podcast and, you know, like I, and this is so silly. Me. I had, I love that dude. I had a man crush on that dude. I was like, see, this guy gets it. Not a cheater. Uh, loves this, loves this girl, you know, and, and You're talking she about Tom or Tom James and Ariana, Tom? no Tom okay, and Ariana. Tom. Like yeah. she loves, uh, yeah, he loves her big, and she, you were oh, a big supporter. Oh, I mean, I would, no, I mean, I was like total man crushing and yeah, you know, I was like, okay, he doesn't cheat and he just, he goes off and does these crazy side projects. And how cool is that? She supports yes. him. He get and that's, and it's like kind of this bummer to like realize that he's bad, basic. if not worse than Jax. I mean like that, he's you know, you basic. expect it. Yeah. yeah. And I just, that's, I'm still getting over that part of it. And that's why like, even in my memes and the podcast, I've hit like twice as hard as I usually do on anybody because I just am yeah, I, so sounds so silly. I literally have the emotional aptitude of like an eight year old, but it really <laughs> st like it really just stings. Yeah. And you just see now everything seems cheesy to me. Now I look yes. at his band and I'm like, ah, I used to love, I've seen them so many times now. I'm like, oh God, cheesy. Now I see him in yeah. that black outfit outside with those paparazzi photos, yeah. like smoking, yeah. like you don't understand, man. Every, I'm just in love with Raquel, man. And she's like, I love you. You know, like I, and I even, you know, I even liked her too. Well, no, I mean, listen, she's always been nice when I've been around her. Mm -hmm. The only thing I keep saying is that there's like a vacancy there in her eyes. Yes. And I don't know where that really comes. But like, I, I was there at that daily mail party that they showed on the episode, yes. like four or five episodes ago. Yes. And I remember, I didn't realize the Peter thing was going to be a storyline and I was with Kiki Monique, Talk of Shame, my roommate, all these. So I remember uh, seeing that Allie was there, DJ James Kennedy's girlfriend. And I had never yes. met her, but I was told who Love she her. was. And then I remember, you know, Raquel was like walking away from the Peter thing or something. And I, I was going to the bathroom and I bumped into her. I go, hey, are you OK? Are you, are you OK right now? Because I was like, this must be so intense. And she was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, why was I asking that? And it like... That was always my experience. It was like really nice, but I couldn't, um, I didn't know if she understood. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just really hard. Like usually you can read people, you can tell people if they're happy, sad, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I was never able to get a beat on what her, she was nice. I'm not, she's never mean, but I just could never get a beat on what her personality was. And I just know those guys took her in. So like really ingratiated yeah. her into that friend group. Like, I mean, and not just Sandoval, Ariana, like, all. I mean, it wasn't oh. just, she was deeply ingrained in all of that, like text threads, all that stuff. And that that's the, like, and I'm very on the outside of all of this, but I did see enough and was around enough that I even yes. knew how much. Um, and that's like the thing that's got to really, I think probably at the end of the day, stick with Ariana the most is like, she really went to not even to bat, but just, I don't know. Ariana's always just like kind of on she the right opened, side of things. Yeah. She really opened up to Raquel and, embraced her maybe embrace is the word I yeah know. yeah i mean i i mean they really i mean you even saw it at that pool party like they helped yes. her find her voice and get her confidence and now you realize that sandoval was just like you don't understand dude you're so special you're so amazing man you've got to believe in yourself more f la la f f those girls man they're haters dude they're haters it's like uh tom i love how you believe in yay like it's just such a bummer and I was just, uh, it's weird now watching the season, everybody's saying the same thing because now you're watching it with different eyes. But if none of this had happened, this would have been, what a great season for Raquel. We would have been rooting for yeah. an underdog. We would have been mm -hmm. like, she's really funny. Like she got out of that abusive relationship with DJ James yeah. Kennedy and she got, and it's just weird how these shows can change on a dime. And, mm -hmm. but at the same time, this show, people wrote this show off two seasons ago. I was talking about this on an Instagram post. Yeah. Or we joked about, you know, remember when there was like a lizard funeral for dog, Schwartz's uh, lizard? Yeah, and he couldn't, yeah, yeah. He Schwartz for like a li week. Yeah, Schwartz even couldn't like, <laughs> the lizard died in Schwartz's care, you know? And yeah. so it was, they, they had a pool party to celebrate the life of D-A-U-G dog. And I was like, 
That's why I always say the show jumped the lizard instead of jumped the shark at that moment. Because I was like, wait a sec. The great and mighty Vanderpump Rules is now doing a storyline about a lizard's funeral. I was like, that's, that's weird. like the dog wedding in Southern Charm. Like, exactly. that's what I, I like, felt like. This is an all-time low. Like, but now, with emotional upheaval and yeah. people's real pain, I love the comments I still get of like, this is so set up. This is so like, they knew, but they really strategized. This is so set up. And it's like, I hate to break it to everybody. This is not set up. Like, do you think that Schwartz Wait, and no. Sandoval would be able to literally do a point by point no. plan on what to follow? No, no, they couldn't. I don't think they could. However, deep down inside, because now everyone's looking at Sandoval completely different, obviously, and rightfully so. Yeah. Do you feel like this feels so on brand for him and like. I almost feel like he knew this is what would happen. And now this like is his moment to like, like be very dramatic and have his like Jack's moment because don't forget like, and I started doing a rewatch. I watched the first four seasons and I've been like combing through, right. To get like evidence of Sandoval, like being a complete hypocrite, yeah. and, like almost a sociopath one would say. But, um, shoot, where, where was I going with this? Um, no, you were saying Sandoval, about it being like planned. Yeah, I feel like he almost, like, there's trauma with Jax and Kristen. DJ James Kennedy, don't forget, was originally introduced to the group through Tom. And there was a moment, I posted a clip where Tom's like, you know, we were supposed to make music together. He was supposed to move in with me. And this is before Ariana. And I almost feel like, Tom felt a certain way about James when he came on the scene and that all kind of like crashed and like he had this prior trauma from his best friend sleeping with it. that same girl who now is taking his other friend. I think Sandville has deep rooted trauma and issues that led him up to this point and he almost knew like this is going to be a moment because he's so oh. extra, which is actually just so See, basic of him that makes a lot of sense but i will say with sandoval the one thing that you've got to keep in mind is that sandoval very much cares about how he is perceived for better like he he wants to be perceived as a good person if you watch the show it's always about yeah. that it's jackson come yes. on jack come on man yeah. He, he he wants to be perceived he's so, so on a moral like exactly so remember this was this was just like even if, and you're going to see this in the next couple of episodes, is that there were suspicions raised uh, because they were seen maybe being a little too close at the Abbey, which is right next to Pump. And you're going to see them talk about this, but it's firmly denied. In fact, everything that I had heard from behind the scenes was people thought she had a schoolgirl crush, but it was completely unrequited. Like people were like thinking, like people were questioning things. There were a couple mm -hmm. of people, you know, Lala, DJ James Kennedy, Ali. Um, but it was, it was completely like, no, no. So this was an like, remember this was discovered by accident, but I do think, um, what you would have seen if you think about Tom's psyche and stuff like that mm -hmm. is that I think he would have waited until after the reunion, mm -hmm. he would have then done the breakup and then he would have slowly worked Rocky, Rachel, Rachel into it and by the next season, you know, it would be because he does care about how the, and, and from everything that I'm hearing too, is that that Dumois blind was actually uh, scare sadly true is that he really was uh, really like, I'm in love. You don't understand. Ariana never gave me sex. Da, 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 da. You, you've got to understand. Like he really was, he still is in this like place of himself like that. Yeah. That's like okay. he's in a place of complete fog right now. I have a, uh, you know, from what I, from what I hear, I'm not going to speak for him, but that's what yeah. I'm hearing is that he still doesn't fully get it. He still like, you know, we always it? rash. Well, we always rationalize ourselves. Like we're never the villains in our own lives. Like we all lie to ourselves to tell ourselves like that we're, cause we'll never, you know, unless you're really, really insecure, like myself or somebody, you're never walking around going like, man, I am a jerk. I am a evil, evil person. You rationalize really? yourself. So I, Sandoval. I feel like that sometimes, not all the but time. But I'm saying but most, like, you know, I also well, you can't diagnose anybody, but there's like, he's, probably a narcissist you, yeah. you like most of the cast on this and also he has been talking about this in fact am i allowed to play an audio clip can you hear an audio clip if i play it i think so this is from sure. i think is season it? five it's an issue and it's a weird thing to talk to you about it's like yeah sorry this is awkward he's talking to ariana's brother we haven't been having sex for a while. oh i remember like, this months. 
And you kind of you got to her about it. Like, yeah, like I did. A, a calm, like, serious conversation you know, about, like, you know, also kind of brought it up, too. This is Jackson Faith thing. I'm like, well, if it happened once or happened five times, if there was a big difference. And she's like, it's not a difference to me. If it happened once, we'd be done. And I'm like, yeah, okay, Ariana, but like, I have no desire to like be with anybody else. But could you really be that mad at me if like we haven't had sex in a fucking year and I have sex with someone else? else? Yeah, you gotta hash it out. There's a root to it. There has to be. Yeah, there cannot be. Should we go? So that was from an episode, I think season six maybe so and he's almost excusing uh, that behavior well, ahead of you time. see he's already saying like okay but if i have an effect and like that's what i was talking about on the podcast today and i don't know if i'm allowed to say the 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 p-e-n-i-s word on here but like you, you know he's whatever. like you know my penis you know my penis needs attention ariana if you're not going to pay attention to it it's going to go somewhere where you will give it attention because yeah. i'm in a band right now like, i'm in a seems- band he seems so concerned. And and by the way, I'm not saying like sex isn't a huge part of any relationship, but there's obviously communication is too. And I think if you're going to say yeah. not having sex makes it right to have a seven month, maybe longer affair. I, I just think that is such the wrong road to go down and it's not going to end well for you in terms of the audience. And he really was at a point where we all were like, you know, I think through Ariana's eyes and you're like, Sandoval's a really good guy. Yes. Sandoval, like, he's really fun. And everybody was like, yes. you know what? I think he's attractive again. I think he's like, look, I think the mustache might be working. And now I look at the mustache. Yep. I'm like, oh, creep. man. Major um, creep vibes by the, I show this all the time. This is how I, when I was over at their place last January doing an interview with him, which was like, he gave me one of the official Richella bracelets there's only 15 of these in existence. Oh my so I'm will, God. I'm willing to How sell this back to worth? Tom. I'm willing yeah. to sell this back to Tom because it might have emotional. Um, but this is the official Richella break. He had these okay. made. You have to realize like he only made like 15 or 20 of these. And he Did said he they were so expensive. No, no. He, he purchased it from the people that actually make the Coachella bracelets. Like this is really Stop. like, yes, that's how much he put all of this money into that okay. engagement thing. So, how, when do you think Tom Sandoval started to have inappropriate interactions with Raquel? I mean, I really, what I, what I do keep hearing is that July thing is really correct. Is that, you know, I mean, I had Jamie Lynn on the podcast, Sheena's friend last week. She mm-hmm. keeps saying it was the, I think the night after guys night, which Ariana. Yeah, but I don't know if we can go by that because like this is like a very this is like a love affair and okay but that's july between that's them t- think I don't about know, if like- you already know somebody on a friendship level you've already yeah. stood up for them you already see how they're being picked on by the people that sandoval already doesn't like like lala katie yeah. or what he perceives for that behavior to be mm-hmm. and then that you know you already have this friendship then in july Ariana is going through the loss of her pets. She loses her grandma pretty soon and all of this stuff. And it's just a huge bummer on him. Imagine yeah. that. And you have somebody, and I don't ever want to agree with Jax Taylor, but I think somebody told him this to say, but he's right in the sense that um, this is like a Bambi eyed, doe eyed girl that, you know, worships Sandoval and like, like I do. I mean, I could have been Raquel for the love of God. Like, but you know, like <laughs> I, I just don't have the look, I guess. I don't vape enough, but he, looked at her she looked at him with such like you know he could put any thought into her that he wanted you know like he could say it's cool if you put a galaxy light on your ceiling she'd be like yeah that's that and i think i think that's so attractive to a dude whose ego needs stoked all the time and i'm Mm -hmm. not even saying that's like a a bad, I mean, it's bad in terms of cheating, but like, think about like, you had Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Kanye was able to tell her what to wear, what to do, what, you know, all of this yeah. stuff. You've noticed even Raquel's like style has changed in the last yeah. four months. You know, it's starting to be more hippie and more of this. But uh, I think Ariana, not that she, she loved him very deeply. It's yeah. just that Ariana is her own person, deals with her own issues, deals with, and they were in a nine year plus relationship where it's not everything that Sandoval says is good as gold. You know, she'd be, I like, you'd always, she'd be like, Tom, Tom. Yeah. Like they, they, what creeps me out too, is that I did this live moment thing. Like I'm right when the season premiered, like the day after I did an online thing and they were my guests and he had just gotten back from watch what happens live. And I was so excited, so thankful. And I just remember 
in that. I like, oh, and Raquel this season, what a come up season. And they're like, yeah. And they're, and it's so dark now to think about that and just to think what, what was to come. And I yeah. just thought, I remember painting my nails white like Sandoval. I was just like, yes, man, let's do this. It, anyways, it was just, uh, it's just so really sad. It could have been Raquel. I think. God. He- oh, no. Thank, no. I, I really dodged a bullet on that one. I, I hate being straight. It's not really, it's not a good thing. But um, no, but I, I just, I don't know. It's just really confusing to me still. But I think what it is, is that he has a really big ego. And Absolutely. she was able to really fill him up the way he wanted to be. There's nothing wrong also with falling out of love with somebody. It really hurts. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong. But it's just the way he went about it is so yeah. embarrassing on such a grand scale. And yeah, the way gross. this story is you know, it's, it's spread beyond Bravo now it, yeah, for the last couple of weeks. World news. So think about your worst moment potentially in a relationship and think about that, get, not even getting blasted to just a Bravo audience, but to a worldwide audience. Like somebody oh. wrote me of like, I live in a tiny English village and we even heard about it over here. I was like, it's reached tiny English villages. Are oh, you no! kidding me? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's all I can do now. Have you been Vander pumping nonstop? Because I've like abandoned all other shows. Yeah, I, I said on. Care. I had to do like I did a two part podcast today where it was like the first part was just reunion stuff and the second part was a recap of this week's episode, which I usually do on Fridays, anyways. But unfortunately, not unfortunately, but like all week, it's been all Vanderpump podcast for me because there's really no. It's like you know, mine usually is a reality show, pop culture podcast, yeah. but it's turned into all Vanderpump because that's the only thing yeah. I can truly think about. Yeah, and it, it and there's pay, so much. I, yeah, everything pales in comparison to it. Like yes. I don't like. Listen, I I hope Selena Gomez and Haley Bieber can be good at the end of the day. I don't but even like, know what's I don't going have, on with them. Yeah, I, I mean, care. like uh, you know, today I guess uh, Selena asked everybody to be cool with Haley, so I'm already I'm fine. I'm leaving it alone. I'm gonna focus on this handball stuff. I but still at a certain don't care point, about them. <laughs> we are gonna have to come up for air. We are gonna have to get yeah. back to normal. And I, you know, I, it was so funny on Tuesday. Somebody was like. Oh, New Jersey's on tonight. I was like, what's New Jersey? What's Real Housewives oh. of New Jersey? I've never even yeah. heard of this shit. Yeah, no. No. Like everything. I, I watched Ultimate Girls Trip, the new season yesterday, and it was actually kind that. of yeah. refreshing yes, to actually watch something. I was like, okay, I I remember other shows life. before this. Life so, BS. BS life yeah. before Scandal. But there's going to be this huge, uh, when it does end, whenever that is, I don't know if it's going to wait till the end of the season, there will be, it was like that season with Beverly Hills, the first season when Tom Girardi got busted for all the stuff with yes. Erica and the mascara and everybody was so the hyped. Hulu and that was also during the pandemic. Yeah. It's going to like, it was that, I mean, this is time, you know, this is way bigger than that, but that was yes. another time where at the end of that Beverly Hills season, I remember going, oh, thank God it's over. Thank God it's over. And like, and already starting to feel like it goes up and down. I'll be like, I'm so tired of this. And then I'll be like, oh, this is so exciting. And then you realize it's like it heartbreaking as well. And that's why I think it's up and down. But that's why I think we're so into it because it does hit every, every piece of the the emotional landscape, you know? It does. I know. I'm like. I was so, sick over the weekend, like throwing up, and I'm like, but wait. I was like refreshing my Twitter. I'm like, what's going on with Scandal? Oh, wait. I, I'm just reading the comments. Martinis with Eddie. Hello. Fix my life. Oh. I know. I know you guys. Hey. Um, yes, we love all of them. Uh, hey yeah. Wait, you wait. You were throwing up because of Scandal? No, not be- Well, I do blame Scandal and everything. I have this yes. pimple I blame on Tom Scandal. My, I went, I won't get into it, but yeah. Pretty much, uh, he tried to ruin my birthday. My birthday was March 6th, and I'm a birthday monster. And so, like, Scandal happened. It all broke on the 3rd, which is the beginning of my birthday weekend. I'm like, oh, how dare he? This is so Scandal. Right? Oh, like, I remember how- that Friday. It was the Friday. I remember it was Friday yes. three weeks ago. And I know I remember yeah. hearing the news. I was at, like, a th- like a physical therapy session, and... I remember you know, reading and going, oh, that's BS. That's not true. Yes. And then, you know, that's having to pull went. over to go live with Kiki because she did talk of shame. And then I was like, I, I, then I went back and I really was just, bum- I mean, the rest of the night, like I, I had to drink wine. I had to yes. be, and I was just bummed. And usually Friday's like my night off after podcasting all week. And I usually watch Love After Lockup to like unwind. And I was just like, I'm just, I was just sad. Like there was not even excitement yes. in it for me at that point. I was just sad. I was just like, so sad. Oh no, because I did find out it was true. And I was like, oh man, this is And not brutal. just that, like, 
I at first I thought, okay, maybe there was like a drunk night and they like had a little kiss or something. Yeah. Like maybe it was something like that. But then when I kept more information was coming out, I was like, wait, what? They want to be together? What? This has been going on for months? What? In the house? Like it was just nonstop, like hit after hit after hit. And like the emotional journey has been wild. I mean, I'm also too. I mean, right when we were coming on, I was telling you that uh, Raquel Rachel Rocky, she put out a statement saying that she did, uh, you know, file paperwork to uh, yes, what is for that the, the restraining about? order, which I think is this is what I had heard last week was that that the re temporary restraining order was going to be dropped by Raquel, but it never was. So I was like, oh, I guess I got incorrect information or something must have happened. And mm -hmm. then we just uh, we did get an official statement about 45 minutes ago saying I can confirm that my attorney took my case off the court calendar and is filing the appropriate paperwork requested by the court today to dismiss the TRO from moving forward after the 29th. We let the court know that I will not be moving forward with a permanent restraining order. My team tried to work with Sheena on a mutually beneficial agreement, hoping to get the TRO dropped earlier so we could film the reunion together. The TRO was intended to provide a cooling off period after I was punched, but I didn't want to continue with the permanent restraining order, nor did I want to cause Sheena any further agony and stress. Which is so many different, that There's goes in so many different directions. And also the word of punch is, instead of hit, is interesting. Uh, I was always just told. She permanent scar on TMZ. Yeah. You can see I have a permanent scar. Which, by the way, remember, guys, in Los Angeles, it's totally fine to approach a celebrity and ask completely personal questions. <laughs> They'll be totally cool with it, like Raquel was. They will not be shocked at all. Feel free to go right up to people and ask them, is it true that you had a threesome? threesome. With Ariana? Like, ask ask personally, because people are just so cool with it out here. That's That was completely not staged. Not It was completely oh, yeah. a surprise, and she was very cool with it. But yeah, I was always told that she was shoved, definitely. Like, that happened. She was shoved. Yeah. That's not in debate. But I was told there wasn't a hit. Um, so this is Maybe interesting. But I was shoved her and, like, she hit her head on the brick wall. I like was thinking that. Or, like, if you look at Sheena's nails, like, their talons. And that was the other thing, too, is, like, yeah. how is she going to make that fist with those talons, I kept thinking? Yeah, like, not like even this. in a joking way. I'm like, how do you do that? But, like... What if a like she shoved and a talon got in there at something yeah. like accidentally like this? That, yeah. But the same violence is never the answer. But I will no. say like don't mess like like everybody makes fun of Sheena, but don't make mess with Sheena, man. You see those like high school photos of Sheena where she looked like she was like uh, a, a juggaloo from Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> she was just like you would not want to mess with that girl. So, and also at a certain point, remember Sheena's reputation, like she saw it flashing before her eyes because she's yeah. already gotten crap for 10 seasons. She went to bat yeah. so hard for Rocky, Rachel, Rachel, that it was like, how, <laughs> I mean, I can just imagine her being livid, not only yeah. for her best friend, Ariana, or, you know, but also for herself. Yeah. And also the worst thing in the world that I'm sure Sheena will always be livid about is having to pay for a lawyer to deal with any of this. Like that could have gone to summer moon clothes. That could have gone to Brock's protein powders. Yes. That could have like, you could have spent that money so many different ways. Don't mess with Sheena's sure. money. And I think she'll always never forgive Raquel Rachel for that. But remember this show is going to have 11th season. What's going to be interesting is who signs up and who doesn't. And Remember how many times they forgive Jax? Remember how many times? It'll be interesting to see because they're interested in the show going. They want a paycheck. So who's going to film with Raquel Schwartz Rachel will. if she starts? Oh, Schwartz definitely will. But who else? Who else? That's what I'm really interested in. I feel like they'll try to weasel James somehow i don't know james is very like again no i'm only this. doing guys nights guys nights <laughs> only scenes no i want a guys night what um, do you think about james being so upset over this does that well, give I mean, as, red flags or is well, it normal well on that three weeks ago i was literally like oh i wonder how his new girlfriend feels about him being so emotionally attached to this situation still she's like oh i knew it oh, i knew it uh, both of them are horrible people yeah, and this yeah. Is another thing where everybody's like sandoval had his sights on R raquel rachel from the beginning and i was like that i mean i know we all want to believe these things but like uh, genuinely he i mean they spoke about dj james like that was why i was pissed when he originally put that thing out on friday of like they're bad people because i thought it was 
fake first off. And I was like, how dare you? I've heard Ariana and Tom speak up for that dude even when there's no cameras around, even when like they've, they've always said the nicest things about James, even though yeah. he's very troubled himself. So I was yeah. like, what a, sh what a dick. Like, and then he does seem invested, not only in the fact that it's Raquel, which he seems obsessed with still, but that it's Sandoval as well. And that, like you said earlier, speaks to, they do have this very weird history. You know, remember he's slept with Dodie. Uh, he slept with, you know, like there's all of these things that you forget yes. how many intricacies there are even to their relationship. And, yeah. you know, there were a time when Sandoval and DJ James Kennedy fought each other. And then there was a time where they started making music together. Then there was a time, there was all of these little facets to their relationship. So I think in a sense, there was a genuine he might have thought Sandoval was cheesy, but also I think there was a little bit of like maybe a little bit of me in there where he genuinely had a very weird love for Sandoval as well. I don't mean I, in a gay sense I, or anything like that, but I, I think like it was in really a brotherly kind of way because don't forget, like James doesn't have his family around. Right. And a lot. Yeah. I mean, most of the people on this cast don't have their family around. So. Well, we've seen his father and we've seen his mother. And those are both individuals that have gone through their own struggles. We've seen, you know, like his dad's mm -hmm. like, I'm a gangsta. And like, that's who he looks up to in that. And then his mom we've seen, you know, she seems really great right now, but we've seen her when she's not been great. And, you know, I think scares me. Sandoval, Sandoval is one of the only people along with Ariana that really stood up for James when a lot of people didn't. And yeah. if you go back and watch the shows, James did some horrible things. Yeah, there was abuse. There was, I mean, and that's even the thing spit that I question Kristen's now. Door. Oh, spit on I mean, there was everything. There was abuse. I mean, like, I'm I'm just he's done some wild stuff. The one thing I'm still curious about, and if I ever got to talk, that it's like I still don't get a real clear grasp, even though they filmed many seasons together, of like what Raquel and DJ James Kennedy's relationship was actually like. Like, what did they talk about? Like, what did they, every uh, scene didn't parties. seem it was like, I need you to stop drinking. And, but it, it didn't even seem like, I'm not saying it was fake, but it didn't seem like a relationship I've ever been in. You know, like it, it seemed, I don't know. Like, I'm just so, so curious. I, I still don't know who Raquel is. So on my actual birthday, this is like day three or four of Scandaval. My mother and I went to a spa that was like two and a half hours away. So she made me drive so I wouldn't be on my phone. <laughs> but the whole time I was like, okay, but I'm going to tell you all about Scandaval. And her theory at the end of this, she goes, she, my mom thinks that Raquel watched the show before she got on, planned to get on the show and planned to like, that she planned this whole thing out. She, I think we're, I think, you know, we're giving all of these people way too much credit. I, yeah. Like I, 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 I have like, I'm, I'm a pseudo go getter. Like I'm medium. Like I would not, I would not classify her as a go getter. But what I will say is I think she was very excited to be on the show. And I think she was very like, what a cool thing. I think she really liked it. In fact, uh, a lot of people sent me her Facebook post from back then in 2018, oh, you know, really? on Facebook where she can post, um, you know, starting a new job at on Facebook. She did that with the Vanderpump Rules logo in 2018. Like, remember, she's been on the show since then. So this isn't new. We keep treating her like a newbie and she's just not. It's just that she didn't even have a usable voice for most of the seasons. So, um, I, you know, she was very, I think, very excited to be on, you know, like, look at me, look at me. But I don't think that was by design. She might have set her sights on Jay. But like, remember, DJ James Kennedy you know, she could set her sights on that, but at the same time, you'd have to have so much foresight to be like, okay, if I take this down the road, I could potentially get with Sandoval or Schwartz and I could do, you know, she, I'm not saying that she doesn't have it in her because obviously she's done some wild stuff, but I truly do think she's a very lost person that doesn't know who she is yet. She's 28 years old. I think there's a lot of issues going on. And yes. um, I just sometimes don't really subscribe to the theory that they all planned everything out. It's like, I don't know. Like you're more ambitious than Raquel and you don't plan everything. You know, like, I mean, what I'm saying, like, honestly, I would like, never plan something like this, but now. you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think there's a difference of, you know, I mean, that could be a thought in the back of my head of someday I want to be a star, but I think a lot of, I mean, Sheena had the same thing. She, you know, 
I mean, and by the way, Sheena had I want to be a star more than any of these people. And yeah. Sheena wasn't like trying to trying to go for like Randall Emmett. Sheena wasn't trying to go for people that she thought could help her career. Sheena went with Brock and with Mike Shea, with Rob Valletta. She, I mean, like Rob Valletta maybe in some way had some industry connections. But other than that, Sheena always went by, I think, who she genuinely liked. Yeah. What do you think about her toothbrush chart? What? Oh, I, I'm lit. I think I'm in the minority. I was like, hell yeah. Like I love the chart. I have a, uh, I have an app called done and it literally reminds me every day of what to do. Yes. And it's literally it's brush teeth in the morning, check calendar, meditate, write in journal. I, love I have it. all of these that I check off every day. So I saw that. I was like, hell yeah. Um, yes. I thought it was great. I called mom I was at it. the bottom. I, yeah, I, I had, I like crap like that because I'm not me like too. that. So I, I love things that are like, make me think more like that. So that was yeah. the, something I like. I, they blurred out the painting in her living room though. And I want to know why, like I noticed that painting was blurred out. So I'm like, was that a big painting of Brock and Sheena? Like, why did they blur that out? Like, I I'm so curious Maybe, why it was well, blurred out. Have they been showing Brock at all? They haven't, right? Well, they well, did Brock was in that kiss. scene. Yeah. yeah. Brock was, yeah. Brock was in that scene. They haven't, he just doesn't have a storyline. He's not getting paid to do this season. And he, uh, they, they, you know, from my understanding, they weren't really interested in following Brock this season. And he was yeah. like, well, if you're going to think like, I don't, you know, He's like, well, I don't need to do it. I'm not here just to be on the show. I mean, that's what right. I remember him telling me at BravoCon. So, do you think Brock is a good guy? Uh, I actually listen. You don't take my. I I don't know anymore. I'm wrong about all these people, but I, I, I do. The, every time I've had an interaction with him, I've always left feeling somewhat inspired or somewhat like I like him. You know, like I but at the same time, listen, I mean, he could end up being a, a dog and a jerk too. But yeah, I've always really liked him. him and well. he seemed to be really very cool with like, you know, yeah, she does. she's a, that's my horrible Brock voice. But like, yeah, she's great. She's loving it. Because <laughs> I remember BravoCon, he told me how much BravoCon <laughs> meant to Sheena in particular Aww. because she needed that. Like she had so many people showing her love at BravoCon and she was genuinely shocked. She was just like, Aww. wow. She thought people just did like, she was just, she, she, he said she really needed this, you know, this, Aww. this really has filled her up and made her feel so good. And it was like, so remember that cute. Vanderpump rules was on the decline. And so to go out there and yeah. like all these people to have like really good feelings and thoughts about these characters and these people, you know, they're not, movie stars and stuff like that like you don't reality tv is like a hard business so i think bravo con for a lot of the bravo liberties meant so meant as much if not more than it did for us i loved bravo con so much did you see raquel so now we know that like raquel and sandoval were having their affair during bravo con do you remember seeing her there because yeah. i got a weird energy from her and i stayed away well, that's just, it's not weird. It's just like, that's, I feel like how she is, but I, I went and saw that Tom Sandoval on the most extra show that Saturday night mm -hmm. we left. I realized that my, my equipment got stolen that night where I had like my, my recorder, wallet? my wallet, all of that oh stuff. Oh my God. I didn't and know so was, I had to go all the too. way. I don't go all the way back to the, the, the place where they were playing. And it was after everybody had oh. left. I texted Ariana. I was like, Hey, uh, did anybody turn it in with you guys? And she was like, no, but she goes, Hey, you know, come to Schwartz's 40th birthday. We're over here at uh, some bar by the, the Gansvort. And so I went over there cause they were like, you already lost it. Why don't you come party? And the first people I run into are Sandoval and Kyle cook from summer house. And Kyle was like Shh, tanked. And yeah. that was a blast. And then I went in there and it was like Schwartz, Sheena, um, Raquel, uh, the whole gang, Kyle, um, and we shut that bar down and they let us stay until like four in the morning or something. And I remember <laughs> it was another one of those moments with Raquel where I was like, I've been around you so much and I still, be, I don't think you know who I am. I don't like, we, we have, like, it's so bizarre. I don't know. It was one of those other moments, but I didn't get a weird vibe, but I also wasn't looking for a week. I wasn't looking. And then I remember yeah. afterwards, it was like me, Ariana, Tom, um, my uh the some of the bandmates like jason the drummer and we were all s standing in front of there 
And this is like, Tom was like, you know, here, here's some, you know, here's some money to, you know, if you need it in case you lost, you know, since you lost your wallet, like, and he was with Ariana and I was just like, these guys are the best, man. These guys are so nice. And, and Raquel wasn't there. Like they were, we we're all getting ready to go to bed. So obviously it, it started, but I just wonder at what, what was the intensity level? When did it get yeah. intense? Was it intense? Was it purely a sexual thing? He says now they said, you know, there potentially is love involved, but it must like, was it a slow burn? I mean, those are the questions I have now because yeah. seeing them that night, it seemed like, you know, they were still very much together. You know, I had this theory that like Sandoval has been preying on people at Coachella, but it sounds like you said at the last no. one, and Ariana were the, cozy. I mean, no, yeah. And just the group they travel and you got to understand, like it's a really tight friend group. You know, you got Logan, you got Brad, um, you have all of these people that really, and you saw a lot of those people at Al Ariana's celebration at Laurel Tavern last night, you have, which by the way, Jax was at, which is cracks oh, me up. Was? Like, oh, by the way, yeah. it's so funny for somebody that made so much fun and like really said some mean things about Ariana. He really owes whatever career resurgence he, this is for him. He owes this to Ariana. Like he owes this to Ariana. Like that's, what's so funny is that this person that he made fun of her mental health and her sexuality, he now owes a lot of this to Ariana. Like she would not have been asked back to watch what happens live. He would not have, he would have done his podcast he, potentially, but I mean, the timing it just, is impeccable for him. Like yeah. Jax has all the stars aligned for him with Scandaval, his house of villains and his new podcast. Like you said, yeah. He does but just remember he had, he does have all the stars aligned and it's now up to Jax, what he does yep. with this. Yes. And he can either burn it, like burn mm -hmm. it down to the ground. Like he's done like, many times before, yep. Or he can usually, or he can maybe turn this into something. You only get a few second chances in entertainment, it feels like. Um, and so this is one of those. And he has to be real careful because my thought, I don't think they need him back on that show. I don't think, he, you know, no, yeah. Brittany seems very nice, but I don't think they need either of them. Like, and the only way they would, and I, I talked about this on the podcast today, I said, you know, take this down the rabbit hole. The way he gets, like the, the only way for him to really be effective on this show would could potentially end his marriage. Like for him to be really effective, he would cheat. He would have to cheat and he would have to get caught. And then we'd be like, he did it again. Oh my God, he did it again. And then he would be like, Brittany, I had to. We needed a storyline, Brittany. We needed a storyline so badly. I did it for the family. I love you. Like oh, that, God. that's what would scare me is that like, why would you yeah. walk back on a show that this is when the show is at its best is because of situations like these, yeah. which are horrible and break apart relationships. So I know Jackson, and Brittany want money, not in an, in an evil way, but they want, you know, they want to provide for their son and all that stuff. But to really do that successfully, you have to do some really awful things. And I yeah. just don't know, like, be careful what you wish for. Like why, like Lala wants to back on the show just because Lala, you know, even Lala, I think, is potentially in need of a storyline at some point, you know? Well, I feel like she's jumping on this Scandal thing hard because it's like it takes away a lot of attention off of what's going on in her own life. Well, what do you, I mean, let me ask you this because I, I have I have had some back and forth with people because for me personally with Lala, like oh, yeah, her, what like you her, guys her, got, her, had some beef, right? Oh, uh, it was a very it was no, I, I said I, I don't. Take, I mean, it's sad because it was beef that everybody, like, sadly, a lot of people agreed with me on was just that I, I wrote saying last week's episode there, you know, Katie was justified in her dislike of Raquel because she was basically saying, I'm still yeah. trying to make out with your ex, yeah. you know, like, so that was like, you, you, you're not going to like somebody like that. You're yeah. just not sorry. That doesn't make Katie <laughs> a bad person. Lala right. just Lala came off just like a bully. Like, I mean, there's a flat out bully. And yeah. what's so sad is that if Lala really stopped and none of these people do, and I guess that's why we like them. If she stopped to really self-reflect, there are yeah. so many similarities between Lala and Raquel, even in this mm -hmm. episode, Raquel going like, you're a mess stress bimbo is that, know, now that whole thing you've now crazy. turned in to what you like are making fun of her it's so yes. wild that they all imitate each other's patterns but lala can't stop and go because she was like i cheated six years ago with your boyfriend <laughs> and like like that matters like i'm like yeah doofus she's six she's your age she's your age when you did that right now lala. yeah like like don't you even understand like for yeah. me and so she and i said unfortunately with lala she is sitting on 
one of the best storylines that this show could ever have with Randall Emmett. And unfortunately, she's not able to use it because of legal yeah. things. But she was trying yeah. to school me and like, you don't know how this works. This is what you got to do. This is law, man. You got to. <laughs> and I, I, and but by the way, like she is going through, like she's got a daughter to provide for. She's mm -hmm. like all of this, what she thought her future was, was crumbled. But yeah. once again, even saying that your heart goes so out there that you're like, I wish this is what I would see from her. Like she can yeah. be tough and strong. Like it doesn't take away from the tough la la, the strength la la. Yeah. Like I genuinely, and I just for me personally, maybe the girls all dig it, but like I don't need to hear about her squirting all over the walls and Lake Havasu. I, I don't, I, I really don't that. like, I mean, cause no, it makes me think, I, I, well, it's not even gross. It makes me like, it reminds me of like Steve Carell and the 40 year old virgin. I was like, ah! has Lala, I was like, has, has Lala ever had sex? Like I was like, right? yeah, I was like, maybe, a big I know she's had the baby, but like, she sounds like she was like, Dude, as I was hanging off the game. wall, he like, there's always these things that I'm like, what? you know, <laughs> like, wait, what? Like, or like, she says like we like, yeah. through this bed and I'm, I, and I'm like, good for you. Like, I want, I want her to get her free yeah, on. I good want her for to like, her. but it's just funny. I don't know. All of that it kind seems of unnecessary. It's over the top. And like, we don't need to hear that. Like, good for you. Why well, talk so about it so much when, if it's true, like. I, it just, like you said, yeah, it is giving well, she, off very I, much see, like I, Steve Carell. I want her on Beverly Hill. I think she'd be such a great housewife, even if she's not married. But, like, oh she's God. giving off Erica should, Jane. Yeah. Of like, I'm, I'm having so much sex. I'm Erica Jane. Yes! She, yes. She's giving that kind of vibe <laughs> where it's like, yeah, okay, well, I, I don't know. And I have this disagreement because I was talking with one of my friends saying, like, she they, she loves Lala. She's like, you know, she knows this is an act. That's who she is. It's all bark, no bite. She loves that. And I love it to a degree, but I think it just then lessens if Lala's the one to come after Raquel at the reunion, I don't, like, Ariana, when Ariana says whatever she's going to say to Raquel, I will be listening there as silent as possible, like, just taking in everything because that's the person that I want to hear from for Lala to do it for me personally, know, like, it'll be entertaining. There'll be fun sound bites. Cause she talks in talking heads yeah. and Lala knows that's her moment. So she's going to come through. But at the end of the day, that doesn't hold a lot of weight or water. It doesn't hold anything for me because she's done very similar things to Raquel. And that's not, yes. I'm sorry. That's not mistress shaming or whatever. We, I mean, I, I, unfortunately, no, but we live no in a society, stand on. but we she live in a no society that, stand punishes women more than we do men yes. like and i guess it's also one of those things is guess what from the beginning i thought R randall was a douchebag i've not had to catch up to that like from <laughs> day one like so i'm not yeah. so like it's weird like i've always accepted that he was a douchebag even when lala was saying it was the best person she's ever met Stand best sex she's guy. ever had like i remember all that shit she used to say <laughs> so my thing is is that like i i think lala's so entertaining i just personally how it just and I know she's really popular. I just sometimes go, okay, you know, like I, 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 I don't have know. this. She gives off this like. She reminds me of Jen Shaw, and when like Jen Shaw starts screaming and yelling at people, it makes me laugh immediately. Yeah, because it's like you have no leg to stand on, and it just—it's so ridiculous that you can't help but laugh. Yeah, no, it, that's the thing, and I—I I really always kind of like okay. I use the concept of a reliable narrator in my podcast all the time of like, you know, hearing something from Jax, as opposed to hearing something very Ariana, hearing the the one mm -hmm. fact from two different people, you would take it in two different ways. If I heard the one fact from Jax, I'd be like, well, you're, you're a known liar. That's, there's no way I'd believe it. You heard from Ariana, you'd be like, I'm more, I have a more tendency to believe Ariana. So we do that with reality shows. So Lala, like super entertaining. And I hear her podcast is really fun. I hear she shares a lot on her podcast. That is, um, you know, about her situation and stuff. And I'm like, well, good. I'm glad I don't, you know, I don't listen to reality show podcasts anymore, but I'm <laughs> glad that it's entertaining. I'd rather see it on the show. And legally, I guess you can't do it. But um, I do wonder for all of these characters where they go from here. Like, what is Lala's storyline? I mean, is it going to be more hooking up with Don, the Don, who moves it and goes bah, 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 the right way? You know, like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, she needs something because. Yeah, Sheena was a mistress too. They all were. But by the way, that's a great girls club says Sheena was a mistress too. And I think that's such a fascinating comment because you're right. And Sheena is there. She goes, hey, I did do it. I, it is. It was horrible. I felt horrible. Yeah. It was like a scarlet letter. She does say those things. She accepts it. 
she doesn't run from it. She doesn't go, no, it wasn't that way. And yeah, Lala keeps yeah. fighting this. There's no yeah. shame in going like, yeah, I was. I got. I mean, I was lied to by a very powerful man who was really disgusting. And I found that out after the yeah. fact in the moment. But like, I was young. I like, I mean, we all make those really horrible mistakes. Yeah. Guys perpetuate all of those mistakes. They cause a lot of those mistakes for women. And I think we realize that, but at the same time, I, there, there's a lack of acceptance or acknowledgement with Lala and this one point where Sheena completely goes, yeah, no, that's what I did. I felt horrible. I had a full on full yeah. blown two year affair. Yeah. Lala doesn't take accountability and she deflects or she makes excuses or rationalizes her behavior somehow. But real quick, because we're running out of time, I want to know, do you think Schwartz knew? Well, Jack said on Watch What Happens Live that he talks to Schwartz every day, and yeah. he definitely knew. He de he told that, me he according knew. According to Jack. So yeah, yeah, according to Jack. So that's, once again, it's like, if you... That's the hard thing. It's from Jax. Like I want to, like I believe that he did know. I believe he did, and I believe that his girlfriend I Joe knew as well. I believe that he did know. Uh, I believe he knew longer than a month, definitely. And Jax yeah. busted him out for that. But luckily, it was Jax. So it, you, you only give it. You're I like, know. oh, I thirty percent believe. You can't I really know. trust Jax. And Jax was also trying to impress people on television. So I do believe that Schwartz definitely knew for a lot longer than a month. And. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even Schwartz said on a, uh, that Faith episode a long time ago of like, dude, I would have lied for you regardless if you had told me, you know, like, uh, you know, when he got busted with Faith, it's like Schwartz, and that was Jax. Imagine Sandoval. He would totally, like, he would totally lie for Sandoval. Yeah. Um, I, and by the way, I think we've got to leave a little energy for Schwartz as well, because I think that dude's not exactly the most stand-up guy either and has a lot of his own um, mysteries that he's he's potentially hiding, you know? Well, it's weird that he referred to his roommate as Joe. And meanwhile, now we know that Joe is like his girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, she says he's, I mean, like it's a really weird relationship from my understanding. And the fact that I think she's, it's like, I, I think it's like the kind of relationship, but he still does his things on the side. Like what I'm saying is even his Ooh. behavior with Katie, that's, you know, like that, everybody could be like, Oh, that's just because of Katie who she is. And I'm like, think about it. Reframe that. Maybe Katie, acted a lot of like that because of how Schwartz acted. Like think of like, like maybe that's a trigger for her. And maybe just leave room for the fact that Schwartz might do this in any relationship that he's in. It's not a Katie thing. It's a Schwartz thing. Yeah. So maybe absolutely. like leave a little room to think that maybe it's not just Katie. Maybe Schwartz, you know, Katie didn't force him to go get drunk and sleep with a bunch of people. Yeah. Like and that's why that's I always find it so is. When Schwartz is like, and you know, it's like, oh, it just feels weird, like dating and feel like cheating on Katie. And I'm like, well, you actually did cheat on Katie. How did it feel? You do know how that would feel. You've actually done it when you were married to her multiple times. But he's so charming and good looking and cute that everybody's like, oh, it's okay, buddy. I and know. they, the majority of people's anger is at Katie because Katie doesn't come off nearly as charming as Schwartz on television. And and that is just the truth. I mean, I think. For some, but that's because she speaks her mind. But and this Schwartz this season, I think, is one of her pussy. best seasons. I think, it, like, I for her it. to make I the decision it. for her own life is one of the most powerful feminist statements I think you could make yes. on a show like this, where yes. she's like, "We're gonna be good," and she looks great. She's gonna start yes. a business. I mean, those are yes. all like things to champion instead uh, of these two yes. doofuses that have paid like a million dollars to get Schwartz and Sandy's off the ground. They're gonna do a sandwich shop that's going to like actually potentially make more money in the long run. Yeah, I can see them franchising this and becoming because they compared it to like jimmy johns and things like that those are franchises they could put potentially make this a huge huge thing and i'm well i mean totally i hope they do and i uh my show today i i made the offer i will work there for minimum wage i will work in the back i just need to get out of the house sometimes or you can even pay me under the table for less but like i want i i mean i think everybody and by the way i do have like in not i don't this isn't tea but once andy i know that all the people selling the merchandise for them for um something about her once andy posted his with the sweatshirt last night after the reunion 
sales skyrocketed on their website, wow. which is really, really awesome. Just from you that, know? I thought like Just they would have already had a bunch They already did, sales. but it was like a huge spike again oh my God, last I night. Of that. And you forget how much those things really do help. Like yeah. I, 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 always, I always think, ah, oh, nobody really cares. Nobody, does. But you know, you have somebody like Andy mm -hmm. Cohen uh, put that up. It's like, that's wild. Also, were you sad that, um, Andy, like the, the reunion wrapped at like seven 30. Like I, yeah, I'm used to those so early. I'm used to those Beverly Hills reunions where it'll be like, well, we're here at 1130 still. And we've got yes. one more segment to do. And that kind of worried me in a sense. And yes. I don't know, like, why did that end? So, I mean, maybe it was just so dark and sad that they were like, we got what we needed to get. And also yeah. how many other story, like, how do you go from Scandaval to be like, Lala, tell us about squirting in Havasu. Was that amazing for you? Give us some details about that. How is the dawn? Know. You know, I like mean, what is? Yeah, I wonder if they just talk about Scandaval for the full day and then they're like, you know what, it doesn't matter. All the other stuff we were planning to do, it doesn't matter because this well, is the main And that's what I was, line. Jamal also had that blind of they were doing like one-on-one -on -one sit downs with Andy and I was, it was, it was, you know, I got, I was texted the actual information. So it was one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't like Tom and Ariana and Andy. It was Tom and Andy. And then it was oh. Andy and Ariana at two separate times. So they were never alone with Andy. So it was okay. a separate interview with Ariana and Tom and a separate interview with Tom and Andy. And then, sorry, Ariana and Andy and Tom and Andy. And then the other thing was that uh, Ariana, uh, the seating chart, she... Mm -hmm. It was yeah, requested that. that like she did not want Tom and Raquel sitting uh, next oh, to each really? other, and they refused that. Yeah, yeah, you can see it up there. Uh, it's they really refused. tiny, but Raquel's like in between the Toms. On but one so side. supposedly Ariana had requested from production like that not happen, um, and you would understand why that would be really painful to to look at after all of this. But yeah production is making tv in a reality show and they were like no sorry like and that's just was wild you know and by the way i will yeah. say this too is everybody remember like production doesn't reveal you know it was like production new production production didn't know, like production started getting information but they didn't know like i know some of the like they didn't know fully to this extent at all but remember they hear rumors all the time and also the cast just know that the production and cast they can be friendly and stuff like that but i remember in vendor pub rules talking to some of the cast members and i know i had known one of the producers that, uh, and you know i was at a party with them and the producer had said oh this person's really really nice and i remember talking to that cast member and saying oh yeah he says like you're awesome and they were like really Oh, I thought he hated me. He never gives like, you know, like they really do keep a somewhat distance, you know, yeah. I, I think that can be confused at times, but mm -hmm. they're in the dark sometimes as much as we are the cast, like they don't know. And in fact, you know, like, like I remember a couple of seasons ago, they weren't even allowed to have the episode until a night before the actual episode aired, which is very uncommon because in Bravo, they usually give them to a week before, but there were mm -hmm. so many leaks with Vanderpump rules cast that they said, sorry. And that's like yesterday, everybody's leaking. That's why they took their phones away. And if Bravo was smart, they would take their phones away for the next three months because yeah. there's going to be so many leaks over this next time. Yeah. Period. It'll you, be interesting. Okay. I thought it was weird. I know that there could be like a PR person or whatever who had Tom Sandoval's account during the reunion but why if a pr person has his account why are they going back to comments from like 19 weeks ago well, and like well, maybe that's them? the maybe that's the last time there was a positive one i don't know like <laughs> i mean honestly like maybe they're going back and uh, i can't imagine if he has a pr person going through things it's a pr it's a pretty job for them like it's got to be really brutal um i don't know i would be curious if any if any other posts have been liked by tom sandoval's accounts in the last yes. couple of weeks it's just like raquel the other day liking that one post mm. with being neurodivergent and but there was no other likes from raquel that's why it was weird it was like why did you like this one post and comment yes. on this one post yet exactly. we've not so those are the things it's like you do have to pay attention to that so why did he do that or why whoever represented him that has his account i, I will say this this is the other thing weird. there was a lot of rumors about tom sandoval getting weird in dms with girls i i don't want to stand up for the guy at all but i will say tom sandoval rarely is on instagram like if you even just like I, I can tell you he is rarely on Instagram. He doesn't go around That's for shocking. fun. He doesn't. Well, I mean, like he does. I feel like, like that would check, feed his ego. Even check his posts out. Like I mean, it's just like it's usually like band stuff. It's not ever. 
you know, he'll go live or he'll like, you know, he'll go on for like a moment or something, but he just doesn't, uh, I don't think his brain potentially works that way. Like it does for some people. And, uh, you know, it is a big ego thing, social media, but I think he gets his ego stroked in so many other ways. I just don't think he's very adept at social media and therefore he doesn't really do it as, as much as other, as much as the other cast members, you know what I'm saying? I gotcha. I gotcha. Mickey Rourke hands looking for Tom's fans. Mickey, by the way, his mom, he said, had Mickey Rourke hands, which I, I said yes. last week on the show. I was like, those Mickey Rourke hands should have smacked the shit out of that boy. Like, yes, like those Mickey Rourke, I'm I mean, disturbed. like, his, she knew and his since mom December, and, allegedly. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but like, that's a real bummer. And I, yeah, I just weird because now I remember texting Tom and Ariana on the same text around that time when I was with my parents and me and my parents had been drinking. Like, in a, you know, we had just done a Patreon live and my parents were the guests. We were in a celebratory mood and my mom had made one of the uh, I bought her their their cocktail book or Ariana's mm -hmm. cocktail book that Tom got. A, and we, you yeah. know, my mom and, and I will say Tom was really nice to my mom has been her and Ariana. Like, they've all been really nice. And I texted them and I was like, oh, my God, we're celebrating, you know, and I just realized that then. Now I realize, oh, they weren't even in the same location when I had texted both of them. You know, it's like, oh, if that's yeah. true, they weren't even in the same location. I don't know. It it's just like a bummer, the whole thing. I know, it is a bummer, you know? right? I'm bummer yeah, but it looks thing. like, I will say, Ariana, but really good things happen to good people. And, and she will, I mean, this is not, even if she looks happy, I mean, I know she's going to be struggling this this is just doesn't go away. Yeah, but she got a lifetime movie this week. She has yes. something about her. She yep. looks amazing. Yep. She's everybody's so behind her in such yes. a way that's galvanized the Bravo audience. She just in like, a way. lost two hundred pounds of dead weight. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. I mean, it's it's yeah, and in a lot of ways, I think. Uh, in a lot of ways, this will be end up being better for her in the long run, yes, but it doesn't 100%. take away from the pain that she'll continue to feel oh, when she's alone and when she's yes. like, you know, those things. And I think she's putting yeah. on the best face ever and she puts on a really good, good face. But I think that's cool to have those people in Bravo that you're like, you know, because it would be different if Jen Shaw and Coach split. We wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't. We if Coach all of a sudden like we found out all of his cheating, we wouldn't be like justice for Jen Shaw. You know, it wouldn't be that at all. So I think there's just a little bit of a difference in there in is. how we yeah. look at these things. So absolutely, um, I, know, I think I have to be going. I know, here. I know, uh, we're out of time. So I want to. Wait, wait, Marissa, wait, Marissa, did the reunion dress? No, I didn't see it. Did you see it? Did did, did Ariana's revenge dress come out yet? I haven't I, seen it yet. I literally have not seen it yet. I Like I said, there was that Valley Village bar part. Or not, uh, yeah, well, Valley. Yeah, it was at Laurel that, Tavern last night, and uh, I stayed in and podcasted. And But it was, everybody was having a really great time, and I'm... I'm just excited to see what's to come, but also yeah. shout, uh, congratulations to you. I mean, you've been doing this now for a long time and you've been on the scandal ball beat now, 21 days plus your podcast. So congratulations to you for Thank doing you. all of this. I mean, I hope you survive. I hope we all survive this. I, know, I, it's uh, a lot. I feel like I'm going to die and not, that I has know. even nothing to do with scandal ball. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, thank, thank you, you for so inviting much. me. I really appreciate yeah, it. I appreciate you coming on. And if you're not following Ryan, I'm sure you all are, but oh, make sure you go follow. Can I actually uh, do a plug? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel, So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. Yes. And we, we, uh, Maritza makes, Maritza Lopez uh, works for me, has, does these amazing, she's started doing these, she's always done amazing graphics, but she started doing these amazing YouTube graphics. And we've oh, been doing is? a stream yard thing where she's been, uh, we'll do some news and she'll pop up little pictures that are amazing. And oh, she did the so uh, Andy in Vegas graphic for uh, BravoCon yeah. 2023. But uh, what I want to say is that we, I was always wanting to hit 5,000 subscribers and we only post, we were posting rarely. Now we're posting a lot more in the last couple of weeks and we grew exponentially in this last week. And I always said, when I started the YouTube channel, if we ever hit 5,000 subscribers, I will eat a raw onion because what? raw onions for me are the scariest. Like I hate raw. It's like, sh like spiders for me, raw onions Ooh. disgust me so really? much. I and so we hit 5,000 subscribers last night. So I'm going <gasps> to have to eat a raw onion on video I don't even know oh what I really, this is like the closest I'll be to a jackass video. I mean, oh you can classify all my stuff as jackass videos, but ah. I think uh, I'll be back in Arizona next week at the end of the week. Uh, 
and I'll be doing a video where I eat a raw onion. So go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Oh uh, the God, podcast yes. is so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. We have a two part episode today. First part's all the reunion. The second part is a full solo recap where I do all the silly voices. It's insane. I do a voice for Lala's private parts. Little Lala. <laughs> I call her. Li I'm little Lala. Let's do this. Dom, put it in. Yeah. So there, it's just insanity. It's very adult <gasps> material. It. And uh, Jenny, congratulations for everything that you do. Oh, You're killing you. it. Congratulations and to you too. You're well, congratulations on the 5K. I can't wait to see this onion <laughs> eating, but also everything that you're doing. I know you're doing amazing things. So I can't wait for the next BravoCon already. I'm ready to go. Yeah, we do. Wait, do again. we know? Like, that was the only thing, and I didn't really try to find out. Did they give a date, or did Vegas, anybody, is anybody first, supposed to a date? This November? isn't confirmed. First weekend in November, potentially Caesars, Caesars Palace. Oh, did you book your hotel yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But I'm okay, you guys, I'll see you in Vegas. And and if you're watching, thank you for watching and supporting yes. us. I mean, really, this only works because of you guys. So please, the only thing that you can do to support always is like, you know, uh, leave a positive review, uh, subscribe yes. to this channel or my channel and those little things that are like totally free of charge. But thank you <laughs> if, if you're watching right now. And, and Jenny, just text me, text me later. I'm going yeah. to go take yes. care of her right now. But Absolutely. Text me later. Okay. Thank you Bye, so guys. much. Have a good day.